Nowadays, there's a market for everything, and as new products pop up, new markets do too. Which is great since marketplaces are where we exchange goods and services. There is one particular market, however, that exchanges one sole commodity, the world literary market. But how does it work? This world literary market, or so coined by Dr. Pascal Casanova, is separated from our political world market, but they work in much the same way. They're governed by an economy that runs on capital being used by producers to churn out goods to those who demand them. And the greater the country's literary value, the greater the wealth. Literary capital, every country's investment, is made up of three things. Material objects such as books, paintings, instruments, and the like. Age, an invisible factor that appreciates material goods. And literary prestige, or the amount of stock and emphasis a country puts in their literary scene, which usually manifests in how many well-known publishers, influential authors, and devoted reading public they have. The producers who transform these capital are literary institutions, specialized schools, critics and journals, and universities. They then give it to the consumers, who are the students, scholars, universities too, and other readers, especially to those outside the country. After all, according to Paul Valeri, in order for the material to constitute capital, it is also necessary that there be men who have need of it. These consumers exchange these outputs using literary currency, which Casanova insists is language. When people consume literature from a certain country, they give power and authority to the language being used. The power of the language depends on the number of multilingual speakers who use it within the marketplace. This also includes the number of other languages works have been translated into. However, this allows for a state of what Brodel calls unequal trade in the marketplace. The books produced by the countries with at least literary capitals also tend to have less literary value and little literary currency. It's harder for their literary worth to catch up to other countries, as those countries have had their work appreciate for centuries. Perhaps governments can implement a sort of expansionary literary policy. Increase government support and spending on literature by funding more scholarships and authors in the literary field and develop more literature and writing programs in universities. The Philippines is well on its way to gaining more literary and cultural wealth in the world literary market, with well-known writers like Miguel Sijuco bursting into the world literary scene and national classics like Jose Rizal's Mi Ultimo Adios being translated into 38 languages.